On this week's show, five fans speak to me about the return to the stadium and we catch up with Simon Finnegan. Welcome to Witness Rugby Chat, episode 50, and fans are back. A special episode of the podcast this one. I've got a, I've spoken to a handful of fans about the return to the stadium last week for the win against Whitehaven, so that'll be coming up later in the show. And I've also had a sit down with Vikings head coach Simon Finnegan, who gives a bit of an update on where the squad's at, where the what the injury latest is, a bit of recruitment talk as well. Um, and we also talk about some of the informed players and, and how they've had an impact on things. Thanks, as always, to sponsors PD Law Solicitors, Arnold Gorse Financial Management, Parklands FC and Whistle. A shout-out as well to Tom Freeman, who's connected to the Parklands Club as well. He managed to win at Wembley at the weekend as Warrington Rylands won the FA Vars. Um, so we'll get into a few fan clips first. Thanks to all the fans that messaged me on Twitter. and may well do some more fan-related podcasts, as it was quite enjoyable. So um, we'll cut into a few of those now before we hear from Simon Finnegan. So, Kev, okay, tell us about the experience of uh, returning to the stadium at the weekend. Well, I thought it was really good. And um, as you've probably seen on my Twitter, I like a moan. So, but um, it was brilliant because I, f- I thought the stewards were excellent. Uh, I, I'm exempt from wearing a mask and uh, I had proof in that. They didn't ask for it. They just gave me a tag. They were brilliant. Brilliant with my son because he, he can be a nightmare. Like, <laughs> How early did you arrive? Um, well, I, I deliberately picked the latest possible one. Oh. So we, we was we was in um, what, the West End Block F, I think it was. Right. So we got in there for quarter to three. Oh, um, I might come I with think, you next week then. Um, yeah, just a bit of overkill, I think, we're getting people to arrive that early. But fortunately enough, I, I chose my seats well. Yeah, definitely. And, and and so I suppose you didn't have to worry about keeping him entertained for too long. Took him some sweets in, and he was happy. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, and so, and so generally, uh, well, I suppose you probably had a better experience than most people. And uh, given you only got there fifteen minutes before kickoff, and yeah, and uh, obviously, the, I think um, winning as well. You know what I mean? That's that's that was that was the main experience. It was it was good. It was good to see him again. It was good to see him get a win. Yeah. How old? How old your lad? He's six. So, so has he been? Has he missed it? You know, has he been asking to go and stuff like that? Yeah, I, the only thing I have to explain to him because he loves going down, and getting pictures with the players. So, I have to explain to him that, that he, he wasn't allowed to do that. But Danny Craven gave him a bit of a wave, so he was made up with that. Yeah, I see. I did see a few of the players actually make an effort to uh, to wave out at, 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 at kids and stuff, were shouting. Um, you know, especially when they walk around at, at the end as well. And, and obviously, there's the the kid on Twitter, isn't there? That I think Danny Craven's given him a pair of boots yeah. or something because he was celebrating Brilliant. in the in the background. So, uh, I mean, do you think? So, I mean, I suppose generally as a as a parent and what and whatever, you're happy to to come back to matches now based on on how they was organised. Yeah, yeah, I think they've done really well. I, I mean, if I'm honest, I think the masks probably a bit overkill because the way people are spaced out. But I obviously rules are rules, aren't they? Yeah, there's been a lot of talk, you know, there's a lot of, I think the problem with the rules is that they're, they're quite ambiguous, so it's like you can interpret them, it's a bit, well, to be honest, it's a bit like a lot of the rugby league rules, um, <laughs> they're a bit ambiguous, it's a bit open to interpretation, so um, that's why some grounds are being a bit, you know, a bit more strict on it than than others. I think I tweeted that I think, you know, you can, when you sat down at a pub, you can take your mask off, so I'm a bit like, well, if you sat in your seat in the ground, maybe you can take your mask off, but then put it back on when you're moving around. But then someone did say to me, because people are more inclined to shout and scream and stuff at the rugby, um, that's perhaps why yeah. they wear their masks. So you, when you're shouting offside, get them on side or something. That it doesn't spray somebody else. Well, that's it. You can see both sides. Because before the game, I was sat in leggies, sat down with no mask on, closer to people than I was sat at the game. So you can you can see that point. But Yeah. What, what are your hopes for the rest of the season? I just, I just want to get... Uh, I want it to get back to normal. I was like like everyone else. Uh, in regards to the rugby, I just I think we need to kick on a little bit, and I think Sunday was um, was great for that. Uh, it was. I, I know. I normally sit in the northwest corner, and I was virtually in the same seat that I sit in every week. Uh, I'm the guy with a massive black and white checkered flag. 
normally. Uh, unfortunately, on Sunday, uh, they said I couldn't wave it because it didn't have a fire safety label on it. Right. So, uh, so I asked the head steward, Mr. Black, what's been the issue the last couple of years because I've been bringing it in for the last two years and there's never been a problem. Uh, he said, oh, we've had a clamp down now. So if it's not got a label on, you can't use it. And the other lads, one of the other lads in the northwest corner, he was told exactly the same. So it's like, you are kidding. Uh, and it's not the first time I've had an issue with the flag. Uh, last, The last full season we had, uh, two games from the end of the season, a steward approached me uh, and asked me to move it. Uh, and I, I said, and why? He said it's causing an obstruction. And where I said that right in the northwest corner, the first set of steps that come up from underneath, I sit right next to that and I put the flag on the pole, extended, and lay it down the wall, the side of the wall, and it comes up over the back seat. And it had it'd been there all year. Uh, and he said, uh, I said, who sold me? Who said I've got to move it? And he said, the control room. And said, oh, Bruce. Uh, I said, so I said, I politely told him what to do. I said, it's been there all year. It's not, it's not been an issue all year. So suddenly, two games from the, the end of the season, it suddenly became a problem. So it stayed. I said, where do you want me to put it? He said, just put it up there. And then when you wave it, you go and get it. I said, so... You want me to put it behind that row of seats, then climb over the seats to get it. Surely that tells him to safety. And so I said, no, it's staying there. It's been there all year. So tell him to go and do one. And I knew, the, I knew he had the camera on me because I worked there as a steward anyway for years. So I knew where the camera was. So I said, tell him to go and do one. <laughs> so he went away, come back five minutes later. Have you got a minute? Took me downstairs. Bruce has seen you. Uh, pointing in this direction, I said, "Well, if he's got a problem, tell him to come over here and see me." Uh, because, but the flag stayed in there. It wasn't uh, that the flag. So, it wasn't that the flag had COVID or anything like that. No. They, <laughs> well, this was this was like two years ago now. Well, the last oh, full right, season. Last the last full season, uh, and I've been away games with it, not been a problem. The only uh, place he had an, an issue away was usually because he said I couldn't bring the pole in. Right, yeah, not not a problem. Threw it back in the car and then just hung the flag up on the fence. Uh, but other than that, uh, it was great to be back. Absolutely buzzing to be back. And I felt that the lads needed us. And I think I think that showed in the performance because that was by far and away our best performance of the season. Uh, the discipline was. Spot on. All right, we get, we get, there was a couple of niggly penalties that we need to stop doing. But overall, I think the discipline was spot on. Some of the rugby we played was brilliant. Danny Craven was outstanding again. Jacko and that and the side that we put out, that's our strongest side that we've had managed to put out this year. We're still only missing. There's only Logan yeah. and Mr. Jewett missing. Uh God knows when they, the, the pair of them will be back. Uh, Logan's obviously got a problem with his foot, uh, but it doesn't seem to be bothering running up and down a ladder every day in his work. But I yeah, know we it's might slightly talk different. A bit more about that later in the in the in this podcast, actually, because I have spoken <laughs> yeah. about that. And then we are, there's a rumor going round. There's an issue around Jewett over his contract that Tim Sheen's. Agreed with him, allegedly, uh, that he only had to train on a Saturday and play on a Sunday. Yeah, I'm, uh, not, I'm not sure about that one, but uh, but you'll find out. Uh, I'm yeah, sure Simon and got, and got to the bottom of it, so you'll, uh, you'll it's, find out. It was one of them. The worrying thing from the first part of the season was was obviously the collapse at Batley, and then obviously the the Toulouse one. But I wasn't expecting to compete with Toulouse, given the strength of their squad, but I certainly wasn't expecting the 
they did it. But when you look at it, they've you know they've done it three weeks running now, so we're not the first. We're not. We won't probably won't be the last with the the, the strength of depth they've got in their squad. Uh, but the, when you look at the results, when you look back to the first result against Newcastle, well, then you think, well, yeah, we should have won the game. But when you look at it now and get, given their results, you think, well, actually, it's been a good. That was a good point. <laughs> mm. what, <laughs> what, what are your um, What are your hopes? What are your hopes for the rest of the season? Realistically, where do you think? Well, it's one of them. If we can keep everyone fit now uh, and get Logan and Lee back and, and have a fully fit squad and pull a side out that can compete, I think having the fans back behind them will certainly help them. But I'm certainly certain we can push on now and push for the top five. Uh, that's got to be the goal, finishing the playoffs. Uh, because then once you're in, anything can happen. It's on the day. Uh, but it's just a matter of building it back up now. And obviously moving forward, it's building the finances up and then to make the club stronger, sell more season tickets, get more fans back into the ground. Uh, but it's just pushing on now from that. Hopefully that'll give the players... A lot of confidence, uh, the way they performed on Sunday. But you could see that they got a buzz from it, from having the fans back. You could see they they threw off that. So first home game back with fans, Simon, and the first one for you as coach in front of fans, and and it went pretty well. Yeah, and no, I mean. I go out and watch the warm up, obviously, and I just, I mean, I spoke about it too, watching the Super League games and the football games with fans and being jealous, and it, it does make a difference. It was, it was clear they went out for warm up and, and they got a clap and there's a bit some chance for it straight away. And I mean, in the games, you just got to feel it. Certain times when the crowd are there cheering, it, it does make a huge difference, and it, it, you know, it was, it was, it was really enjoyable having fans there. It was because I think it did make a big impact on us. Were you a little bit worried about the reception of fans or were the players a bit worried about the reception of fans? Because obviously the start of the season hasn't gone as well as you would have liked. Um, well, it's not something we spoke about. I wasn't worried about what, you know, because I've been at this club as a player and a coach. I, I, I wouldn't have thought and I didn't believe that it would be negative towards the players immediately because, you know, that I think they were just happy to be back as well and, and there was no sense of that going into the game. You, you never quite know, but I... I there was certainly no element of that that was spoke about, and, and yesterday, anyone that was, was that was there, they were certainly the opposite. They were straight away all over the players, and and, and they were really positive towards them. So, hopefully, we, the boys, and and the club did something. We put a little bit of back toward them as well yesterday, because I thought the performance certainly was better. Yeah, the nature of the game certainly helped having the fans back. Where where do you rank that in terms of the performances this season? I know there's been a few halves here and there that have been a lot more positive than others, but but where did yesterday stand amongst all them? I think, well, it was probably our, our, one of our better performances overall, you know, for all the different reasons that are clear. But we're, again, we're, we're, we're making little steps. We're, we're a work in progress. We're, we're never going to be the finished article just yet. And, and yesterday was one of the first times we had a good rotation on the bench and all different things that certainly contribute to what we're trying to achieve. You know, we're... We can't. I'm not going to sit here and say we're, we're we've been good so far because we haven't. But there's certain glimpses in games that where you can see what we're trying to do, and then there's where we're getting it wrong. We know where we're getting it wrong as a group. So it was we had, it was a good performance yesterday, but a lot of factors played into that as well because we had some bodies back and and the crowd being back certainly helped. But it was yeah, it was it was a better step towards where we need to be. You mentioned about the rotations and clearly the bench. I suppose the, the most obvious way of judging that is by looking at the, the starting bench, isn't it? And I suppose you must have wished you had that starting bench perhaps last week against York because that game may have gone a very different way had you had, you had that strength. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, in hindsight and all these things we, and wish and we, we want these things, but uh, I mean, clearly it would help. Whether it, it influences the results, no one can tell, but it would play an impact because... 
the players that are on the field can play a different way and they can put more into it. Uh, and then the players that have come on have got to come on and, and replicate what they've done. But having the options there and what you can do during a game certainly helps because, we, well, we had four forwards on the bench yesterday, which is, again, it's it's unheard of for us this year, this season to have four forwards on the bench because on most games we probably had two back. So it certainly helps everything you can do, the options it gives you. But in saying that, the people that, in, are in the 17 have to perform as well because it doesn't matter if you've got a great bench if they don't come on and and perform or, or up the standard then it's irrelevant who's on the bench and that goes for the team that starts as well the middles have to start the game well for their middles that come off the bench to, to be in the game what can you do to sort of maintain this level of availability now because you know really looking at the squad yesterday there was only Lee Dewitt that that wasn't there uh, obviously apart from Logan Tompkins in terms of forwards what can you do to try and make sure that, well, I suppose you, for them to keep fit, but just to make sure that you, you're stronger and you have these rotations moving forward? Well, we've still got Wilder as well, the young back rower who's unavailable at the moment, but he'll be training this week. So apart from that, you know, it's some of it's down to luck as well. You know, we can't dictate how, what injuries we get and hopefully that we don't get too many for the foreseeable future. But again, we'll, the, the fact that they're playing less minutes, some of their middles as well will have a will certainly have a knock on effect to their bodies because I think before yesterday, the majority of their middles have been playing big minutes, which also risk your you know your, your injury uh, thing there. So that's going to help. But in terms of how we manage it, we we won't change a lot of what we're doing. We, you know, it's not the way we train and what we're doing to get them on the field. We think it's working, and then and then how we manage certain people like yesterday, Cookie himself didn't go back on he didn't he didn't it wasn't through injury that we didn't put him back on but you know clearly he's only played two games in in six weeks or whatever it is you know so putting him back out there to to risk his injury we probably didn't need yesterday so again that will help knock it you know as we move forward and and the boys that have been out there also some of their bodies like Will Talik he'll be battled hard and he's playing better minutes now so that all of these factors has a knock-on effect to how we can keep them on the field. Yeah, Will obviously scored a try um, yesterday. His first game, he's, he's going to, he's almost got the potential to turn into a bit of a cult hero, hasn't he? He has, and and I think you see the reaction for the the squad after he scored the try to what you know what it means for for the squad together to see because we you know we all we all love young lads being in the team and the you know what they give to the team, but. They have to perform as well, and I think the the lads appreciate and the club, myself included, that how much effort he's put in one to get himself in the team, and then you know that's not stopped to keep himself in the team. So yeah, he, he has got that that look about him for a cold hero. But you know we we want that, don't we? I mean, I was up out of my seat jumping up because that's what we want. We want we want to hit, see these individuals play. It. He's a local lad as well, but. He's, he's not got that. He's got that through merit because, you know, he works so hard behind the scenes to keep himself in the team and that's what you get rewarded for. Matty Smith's moved to lose forward the past couple of games and, and that seems to have, have gone well. How did that come about? I mean, I know sometimes you're forced to play players out of position just because of availability, but was that something you discussed and, and where did that come from? Yeah, it wasn't that, that wasn't done out of, you know, being lack of bodies. That's just something... As a, as a staff and as the players, we got together and we thought, how can we do something a little bit different that will benefit the team, you know? And clearly, one, the, the player has to be able to physically handle it and, and want to do it. And I think, well, it's clear to see that Matty can handle it physically, but also that, you know, a halfback going into the middle isn't for everyone. So it shows, you know, his dedication and what he's given to the team. But, yeah, it was just something we thought that might benefit you know how how we use the ball and the benefit the team and and also the middles around him can rotate around and give everything when they're on the field. So at the moment it seems to work pretty well and it frees up Danny and Joey on an edge as well to play what they see, which it was a collective thing that we've all we've thought maybe how can we get a little bit better out of our team, but having the other middles that can rotate around him helps as well. We clearly couldn't have done that earlier on in the season with probably only three middles in each 17, then it becomes a bit more difficult. But certainly for what the foreseeable future and, and the middles that we've got fit, we can keep pushing that that style of play we're using. 
and obviously there's a bit of a nice option to rotate with, with Brad O'Neill who can sort of play both of those positions as well. Yeah, it is. But I mean, Brad, since he's come in, has been terrific. And, and probably the, the game, a couple of games before that, he, he played too many minutes, but that was because of the lack of forwards we had on the bench and he sort of had to stay out there. But now we've got them options that we can move. Like Maddie went up to nine just before half time on the weekend to give Brad a rest and, we brought that extra middle on, your genuine middle, so to speak. So that give Brad a different type of rest. So and then he come back on. But again, that I think we've got players within our squad that can move around when we've got all our middles fit. It's we've got that rotation and players that can play out of position. And also because of you know the the struggles we had certainly at the start of the year between our nines and middles that you know we've had Joey in there, we've had Lewis Els in there. That so we've got some people now that we can move around and. and and keep that attacking threat, which is pleasing in that way. And Adam Lawton's sort of building up some form and, and that seems to be working with him on, on the shoulder of Joel Lyons and, and crashing onto the ball a bit more. Um, have you been impressed with his progress? I have, yeah. I thought yesterday it was probably his best game for the club since he's come back, you know, and, and I, the first stint he had against York the week before, I thought he was very good. And I, I think there was parts of the second stint in that York game that weren't quite you know, as good as his first. But I think certainly the last few games, he's been really, really good and he's working hard, you know, to get to get the other parts really good for him. But I'm pleased for him yesterday because I thought it was an important day for him to to put in that performance with the fans being back. And, you know, it, it gives a lot to the team and, and we know the things he's got to work on and he knows himself and he, he tries his best to work on them. And, but I thought it was, a, it was a really good, solid performance from him yesterday. You could see the damage he could do when he's on it. What, what was the situation with, with Shane Grady? Obviously, he wasn't in your squad and then he, he came back and you sacrificed a, an interchange, which I suppose couldn't have been a light a light decision for you to make, given what's happened so far this season. No, it wasn't. And, and it's difficult sometimes being part-time in these things because Shane, similar to Connor, you know, Shane works shifts, so he's rotate. He, he was always down not to play this week because of his shift pattern and... It was touch and go right up until the squad, but then he didn't look like he'd get him off. And because of how, how it works with COVID and red zones and amber zones and who you can and can't have in it, it's really difficult to name people at the moment that are touch and go. C certainly with work, if they're injuries, it's slightly different. But we, we sort of had to put a line through it and prepare as if he wasn't playing. And then we got a, a late call. or I got one on Sunday morning from him saying that he'd been let go from, not let go, he'd been sent home early from work. So... Uh, obviously, he, he clearly gives a lot to the team, doesn't he? He's one of our senior players. So to have him into the into the 17 gives everyone a boost. And we just thought it was the right decision. Well, I thought, you know, it was my decision to to run with the extra sub or we'll lose the sub because, you know, our injuries have dictated to before we can manage with, with a sub down and certainly a middles down. So that wasn't a worry in terms of the interchange. But we just thought it'd give us all a boost if we could drop him in at that late notice, which... I think, you know, he's been very good consistently. So, and, and the boys around that can manage that less interchange because most of my interchanges, I normally save three for the back end of the game anyway. So it, it worked out in our favour. But, you know, that yeah, that was a call that I thought was the right one to make. Uh, what is the injury situation with with Logan Tompkins? Where, where is he up to? I know, I think last time we spoke, he was just starting to maybe do it the next stage of his rehab. He's, he's on to that stage now, which is he's walking and he's getting to that point where we can start loading it a little bit more. So he's still he's still a fair he's still a fair way off. We're not sure exactly because this is the crucial part now where where we start to load it and hopefully get to the running stage. But that as we as we've said before, that's the the difficult part of the next stage because that's where we could get the flare ups and, and the setbacks. But again, he's. He's, he's not close, but hopefully he gets through this next period because, you know, he's a loss, just a loss of having around training. He's such an experienced person and, and, and how he speaks. So, you know, but I think in terms of Brad, I think he's been excellent for us. You know, he's a young kid, a 19-year-old. And obviously it's clear we see what he can do on the field, but there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that, that he's really stepping up and having a voice in, which is, is very pleasing. Do you think we'll see Logan at all this season? I think so, yeah. I, I, he's he's the type of character that'll be doing everything possible to to get him on the field. Our medical team are, are working hard to do that as well. So, I'd be 
shocked if we don't see him. I just can't say when, which, again, that you know, I'm not a physio, but it would be in the near future. But I, again, I, I, he would. I'd be disappointed if we didn't see him this year on the field. I think there'll be some point where we do. Uh, and I suppose it must be difficult as well for the injured players because I guess with all the COVID restrictions, they're not really allowed to come into the ground and and, and mix. Whereas normally injured players perhaps might be sat in the stand cheering cheering players on. Yeah, it's it's it is hard because I mean even yesterday you come and you've got Brooks here and and Wildy and them type of Lloyd there that you don't see till just before kickoff. So it it is it is difficult because you know they're so close this group as well. They're a really good group and they spend a lot of time together. Obviously at training and we even though they're not in the match day squad and things like that, they, they're still a huge part of what we do and you, you want them to be there and. Even, you know, when we suffer and have them losses because they can pick people up. But certainly when, you know, after the chain room yesterday, you want them type of people around because it, it doesn't feel quite right. If I'm honest, it doesn't feel right that it's only the 19 that get to, to feel that on a match day. I feel, it, yeah, it doesn't sit quite right with me, but I, I, I understand the circumstances and how that is. Not just them, the players, the board as well. You know, they, they're up there from afar that don't get to experience all the other stuff on a match day around the team and, and even in training, they don't get to spend that, that time around the players because they play a huge part in what we do. You know, they, and plus they take a lot of the, the criticism and all that stuff. So it'd be handy if they were there feeling the nice stuff that we get to feel as a team, you know, around us as well. What's the situation with Lee Dewitt at, at the moment? He's still a few weeks off being injured. He's, I'm not sure when we'll get him back because he, you know, he's got trouble with his knees and things like that. So we just got to manage that carefully of how he can can get him back on the field. It's a it's a one not too dissimilar to Logan where we've got to make sure he's he's right before we can we can't really push him. Uh, and are you are you looking or are you expecting to add any more any more bodies? I know we sort of had a chat before we recorded about um, the difficulty with the loan market at the moment. Yeah, well, well, we're always looking. We, we don't stop looking week to week who, who's available. We, we've got players that we always ask clubs about who, when they might be available. I know it, certainly at this time, the Super League clubs are quite reluctant to let people go. I think they may have three games coming up in, in eight days, something like that. Or I don't know the exact fix of list, but there's certainly a, a reluctance at that level to let people out at the moment. So, we're getting a lot. Yeah, they might be available next week and then things change. But we're, at the moment, we're, we're looking. But unless someone that we need to really enhance our squad, we don't, we've don't. we got some bodies back for the time being. But, you know, it's that, that picture changes quite regularly, especially at this club, you know, where we've been at the moment. But, you know, we're always asking the questions. If they become available or, or we need that, then there's opportunities there. At what point do you start looking at, at next season? Because obviously the, the anti tampering deadline's passed for, for players on contract and stuff like that. Is that something that you've already started looking at for recruitment for next year? Or is it a case of you've got to get this season sort of sorted first? No, no, we, we, we're, that's ongoing. That doesn't stop. The recruitment, you're always looking at about how we can shape it for next season and things like that. We're, we're a little bit dictated by the RFL in terms of what... The, the money that goes out and things like that, and that's a bit slow, but for, that's not, you know, that's not their reasoning as well. They, they've sought out the Super League deals and all these things. So that you're slightly dictated by that, but we're, it's ongoing, the recruitment, but we'll also be looking at internally as well, how we're going to read, because there's a lot of people out of contract at this club for next year. So that's under discussion with the board. That's ongoing weekly, how we, where we think the squad's going to be and, and shape up for next season. But yeah, it's we wouldn't be doing it too late. Certainly not. It's it's ongoing. Yeah, because is there is there any concern that any of the players at the moment may be speaking to other clubs for next season? Possibly, but that's the game we're in, isn't it? We can't we can't be dictated by that. It's we have a, a process that we do and how we do recruitment, and that's ongoing. Like I said, so if I, I'm I would be very unsurprised if players aren't doing that. But again, a lot of clubs will be in the same boat. I don't think a load of them will be pulling the trigger on certain players at the moment. We've already re-signed Jack Owens. I think there'll be we will be speaking to other players within our squad as well as we move forward. And just just enlighten us a little bit about the 
uh, the gym situation and the training situation because I know we had a little chat before uh, and actually I think the fans might be quite interested to to learn of, of the difficulties that you have with the gym situation and players having to train alone and, and how that affects how it affects things. Yeah, well, it's it's the the intensity in the gym is certainly different to what it is what it would usually be like because you know, for example, you come in and, and you train in pairs and, and things like that, so you're obviously pushing each other as you go and and now you have to train by yourself. As soon as you finish, you have to wipe down equipment. You have to move around. Players can't just jump on the next exercise. You have to be separated in the gym and things like that. So it, it would be very similar to what you would be for a public gym in terms of, obviously, you wouldn't just go up to anyone in the public and jump on a machine with them and, and things like that. You have to wait your turn and and things like that. So it delays when, how quick you can do things. And, and, and it's just a a less intense environment at the moment that's stepped up a little bit the last two weeks or so because we can there's certain things we're allowed to do a bit more in the gym now but that the gym environment has probably been the most affected I would say around the COVID restrictions because of them reasons you just you can't have you can only have a certain number in the gym it's very individualized of how you got to do things in the gym instead of it being a, a team or a group environment so hopefully that will start to be relaxed as we go forward because the gym needs to be intense and, and, and that, that will certainly help. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an odd one at the moment. It's, it certainly feels like a different place in the gym than, than would what a normal place would be, or so, certainly a normal sporting environment. You've got um, a big couple of weeks coming up away from home, Oldham in the league this, this weekend, which I guess is almost a bit like a must win because you want to try and propel yourself up towards maybe, back end of the play, you know, looking at the playoffs again rather than looking, you know, beneath you? Yeah, we've got, I mean, we've got Oldham this week away and, and, and to be honest, our away form isn't good. That's an understatement. It's it's not it's not anywhere near what it needs to be. So, again, it's a different challenge. But we, the little building blocks we're doing will put us in the right frame of mind to win games. That's, that's the most important thing at the moment. I know we need to win, obviously, but certainly our performances and what we put into games moving forward, well, that'll dictate if we win or not. But we, we just got to keep getting better at all them areas and the results will take care of themselves. And then there's obviously the semi-final to look forward to as well. But I think addressing our away form is is a must. You know, certainly our Yorkshire away form, but I think in general our away form needs to be a whole lot better than it is at the moment. So that that's a different challenge and something we need to step up and improve. Has, has the Featherstone game almost become a bit like a free hit because no one will necessarily be expecting witness to turn Featherstone over, so you almost go into that game with nothing to lose? Do you feel like that's the case? Yeah. Or? I'm, not, I'm not so sure that this club dictates that we get free hits at anyone. I think I understand the point of view that, yeah, they're probably favourites. No one really expects us, but the way the witness fans are and what they expect of us. So I'm not sure we get a free hit at anything. I think it might be that, it, you know, they, they might possibly not expect us to win, but I, I still would believe that we have to go there and put a performance in because that, that's where we don't get free hits. Certainly at this club, I think we have to go and have a go at them. And we've been in this position before where no one gives us a chance in a game. I think last year, no one gave us a chance at Lee and we ended up turning them over. So, yeah, we're, we're clearly not going to go in as favourites. Featherstone are favourites. they got ambitions to be in Super League this year. But, yeah, I'm not – we wouldn't be using it as a free hit. We'll, we'll be going there to put in a huge performance. But we've got to focus on the first week first, which is Oldham. And, again, addressing our away form is important. A few more stories from fans coming up. If you didn't go to the game at the weekend, uh, it was limited to season ticket holders only. You had allocated times to arrive. You had to wear a mask at all times. Um, but generally, it was it was fairly well organised. Um, the exit procedure probably needed a bit of fine-tuning, but clearly good to get things back. Um, I know that... I, well, I have been critical about the number of fans. I believe that efforts are being made to try and increase the, the number of fans in the stadium, but may not happen in the short term. The roadmap comes... Uh, the roadmap changes back end of... June, I believe, so we may see some more there. People have asked about the mask. It's something to do with shouting, so you don't spray um, other people when you're singing and shouting at the game. Um, and then in terms of the, the process of getting tickets, clearly they need to know everyone who's in the ground for test and trace purposes. But 
again, we'll speak to a few more fans here, hear from a few more fans and see what they thought of the overall experience and most importantly, being back in the ground. The stamp duty holiday is being extended on all properties until the end of June. So if you're thinking of moving house, make sure you instruct your local solicitors, PD Law, for all your conveyancing needs. So for me, I thought it was really well run. I know I've heard murmurings and mutterings and people don't like things changing and things like that. But I think it was really well run on the day, considering the world. I mean, it's the world's still scary. And there's a lot of people out there that are scared about it as well still. And I think it's important to kind of give a reassuring feel when you're there that every measure has been taken as possible to be taken. Um, I'd liked the briefing package kind of on the website and things like that that we got in advance, you know, as to the rules and things like that. They were as clear as possible. I wish it could have come sooner, but I work in events and I know that the world isn't easy at the moment with planning for anything like that. So it's... In my opinion, I, I do believe that they got it out probably as quickly as possible, especially with it being a council run stadium. They've got to run it past the council for everything. Yeah. Um, I know I heard a lot of muttering on the day about why we're not why we have to wear masks whilst we're stuck whilst we're in the stadium. And I understand you're, like, you're able to sit in a restaurant and take your mask off, but then you're in an open air stadium where you're spaced out, but you have to leave your mask on. But I think it was right to do it in the first instance because again when you're stood in a stadium it's different than a restaurant yeah. you're stood up and shouting and screaming at the referee and <laughs> yeah i think that's someone 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 did tweet <laughs> to be fair someone did say that to me from another club and and actually when people say that it, it makes a bit more sense to you doesn't it yeah that, you know if people because a lot of the time it's it's uh what's the word it, it's well not that it's uncontrollable but it's like you don't you're not necessarily thinking oh I'm going to put my mask back on to shout do you know what I mean that's it you you to be perfectly honest when someone scores a try half time sometimes you don't even see it coming before you know you stood up jumping shouting screaming and your mask is on your face yeah and again I think it ties into there's a lot of people that are maybe still quite scared that the vulnerable have had to shield maybe for so long or they're on their own or they're bringing an elderly parent with them or something like that where if it makes someone else feel comfortable as well it's a minor inconvenience. I was just happy to see a game for the first time in a year and a bit. Well, and I mean, I know a few. Yeah. I've seen a few people say, you know, about bringing back, you know, what maybe elderly fans or perhaps more vulnerable yeah. fans and, and the issues with that. What did you make of the the bag the bag situation? Obviously, you've got to have a see through bag, but that's predominantly because they, they can't search them. That's it. For COVID it, it, reasons. It's to be. It's because they can't search them. Like I say, I, I work in events, so we've had to cover a lot of this for, say, social distance concerts and things like that. So it, it it's not it's not about just they've got to make sure that the stadium is safe because obviously at the end of the day they can't bring projectiles in. Da, 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 da. You've got to be clear on that. But you've got to project protect the staff that are doing the security in terms of can't touch and like as little interaction as possible. Um, same for it goes both ways. It's it protects you because you don't know who has or who hasn't come into contact and um, yes it's a pain in the backside it's a pain in the backside because you want to get a pie and a pint as well I missed getting a pie and a pint at half time but again I understand that right now for three games at least we have to it's going to be a trial and error and I think the message was clearly put out there the only thing that did kind of I thought was propped up was a lot of people were bringing in you know, like soft drinks like bottles of coke and bottles of lemonade yeah which is fine, but then at the gate, they were being told to take the lids off. Yeah. And then they're like, well, I can't put it down. Like, I saw someone who had it, did that, came in, and as soon as he sat down, the drink fell over. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah, it was it was windy. Yeah. yeah. It was windy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, um, a funny one, that, isn't it? Like, is there a way of giving maybe even something like a disposable cup that's got a top on that we can do or something that they can decanter into then, if that's the case? You know, like how you get the dispo cups with, like, yeah, the tops? Yeah, yeah. I think, because, so I, my, I mean, people listening may may correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the issue with the tops is that, because if it's got a top on, it's more likely to be used as a missile. Projectile. Yeah, it's a projectile. Um, so yeah, that so. that is generally the reason. Um, and I understand it, but again, I think people on the day, they followed the rules, they'd done it, brought in a clear bag, brought themselves a drink, <laughs> then you weren't allowed the top on it, it was like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, well, especially for that length of time as well, you might have needed two drinks, so... Uh, that's the, that's it. it, was it was a long wait beforehand, we were in block D, so we were there about an hour and a half before kickoff. 
Yeah. It was a long wait. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I, I think I was there an hour and 20, I think, before. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I suppose looking at the roadmap as well, hopefully, if everything goes to plan, the restrictions are going to ease again on June 21st. Yeah. So, hopefully, with the two more matches and then after then, hopefully, it'll be That's a little great. bit more... Um, um, I think they'll learn every time they do one of these matches they'll learn something new maybe as well they might say right okay we can readjust this or maybe they might say right maybe we could get people in a bit quicker because I did feel it was a bit of a long wait for quite a small amount of people at the time to come in maybe they could readdress that make it a little bit quicker and a less lengthy of a wait but yeah. again I, the three games it, it's just what we have to deal with to be able to see some rugby <laughs> yeah 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 I mean I think I, I mean I don't know how I've seen a few comments on in terms of the timings. They're not sure whether people, you know, whether the timings were checked that much. Yeah. I suppose part of the challenge is that there's not many turnstiles in operation anymore. Whereas, no, there's only four, had, isn't there? Yeah, clearly, if you had the old um, East and turnstile, yeah, the corners yeah. open, you could maybe get people in. Because I think that's the problem. It's the entry points, yeah. isn't it? It's the it's the getting people through. Um, because it, you know, in many ways, it didn't really make sense how the exit happened because obviously everyone just no. sort of went at, at once. They they made the announcement of stay in your seats, but then where Never we explained. were, stewards started letting people out, or maybe a bit of ex- again once they let them out of the aisles. Yes, it was controlled going out of the aisles, but it was still every block was let out at the same time. So when you're inside the concourse, kind of going out, you still got chunk of people yeah i think i was expecting that to maybe be done differently a little bit more control yeah. um a little bit more like you send a block at a time and then the next block and then the next block i thought rather than kind of everything from every block yeah i think, um, I think the problem is sometimes is obviously once one starts <laughs> everyone follows don't they and, that's it and, uh, yeah you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, but, a mass but, a mass get out but good good to be back and and, and hopefully gradual improvements yeah. over the next few weeks that's it. Fingers crossed. Hopefully not just in attendances, but in the team as well. <laughs> <laughs> so my first game back as a as a fan on Sunday, what did you make of it all? Well, first thing, it was really good to be back. I've watched all the games this season on the uh, on the uh, the hourly. hourly. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it's okay. It's okay watching it on the TV, but it doesn't beat actually going and sell it waking up on Sunday morning and it's game day. And then you, you're all uh, like Sunday morning, uh, like you're looking forward to it. And then you, you get ready. Off you go. Enjoy the game. And then a few pints afterwards. Have a talk about the game, either like celebrate or drown our sorrows. <laughs> so it was really good. Yeah, really missed it. Yeah, and I guess I guess it's one of them things. You know, you saying that your little ritual from a match day. I suppose that's one of the things that people underestimate how important it is to, you know, as a part of your life, isn't it? It's not just about the rugby itself. It's about the whole the whole day and and how that shapes into your life. Absolutely, absolutely, and and it goes like if they get beat, it it like, like it kind of like spoils your week. Yeah. If they win, you know, if you win, you wake up Monday morning, and uh, like a spring in your step. But if they get beat, dear me. So it's been a it's been a grim few weeks for all witness fans, I would imagine. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, and it was a, it was a good game for fans for fans to come back to, and you know, obviously, I'm lucky enough that I've been going to games, and I do think that, and I suppose you could say it's for all clubs, but I do think that some of the things that have happened over the past few weeks may have gone a bit different had there been fans there. Um, yeah, I just think some clubs have that nature about them. Um, where, whereabouts did you sit? Were you were did you get near to where you normally sit, or are you somewhere different? No, we were lucky. We sat more or less in our normal seats in the north stand, which, which, which is just on the uh, halfway line. And uh, it was pretty good. It was, it was very good. It was a good day. 
and uh, you know, despite all the uh, like, you, you like had to be like there by a certain time, and like you had to sit in your like seats all the time. I could put up with all that, and even the uh, even the constant uh, like announcements uh, about the, the uh, like stay in your seat and yeah. and like socially distanced and, and all that. But I think there's one thing that they could look at, and that is getting getting away uh, from the face coverings because yeah. we're, we're like we're we're outside, like we're sat down. And we're socially distanced, so why, why, like you've got to sit there with a uh, like a mask on for the best part of three hours? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the weather on Sunday it was actually uh, it was actually beneficial wearing a mask. It kept my face warm, I think, for uh, for most of that. Well, match. <laughs> well, I wore glasses for the match. Oh, so you were steaming up with? And it kept steaming my glasses up, so. <laughs> So I'm afraid it had to come down a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Did, uh, did you find? I mean, the ordering process was okay, wasn't it? And um, and getting. Into oh yeah, easy, that. easy. Uh, let's say, uh, like I've ordered uh, tickets for the uh, like Whitehaven at London and Sheffield games. So easy, yeah, easy. Excellent. Um, well, Mike, thanks very much for coming on and telling us your experience. I appreciate that. It was a great pleasure, and it, it was very nice seeing you. <laughs> so, Martin, first game back as a fan at the weekend. Just tell me what you thought of the whole organisation of, of getting in the ground and, and being around the ground. Um, I suppose in terms of the restrictions that were in place, it was as, as possibly as good as it could be. I know... Uh, we had to be in for 20 to 2, which is obviously a long time to wait before kickoff, and there's nothing you can really do other than just sit at your seat with the bars closed and everything. So it was a little bit boring, but I suppose just being back in the ground and being at the game was worth it in the end. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, I did I did wonder whether uh, there was any chance of some uh, pre-match entertainment, but I suppose that would have been a COVID uh... COVID restriction as well. They did play the highlights of the uh, World Club Challenge win on the uh, on the scoreboard. I'm not sure where you were sat and whether you could see. Yeah, that. we were sat, we were sat with our back to the scoreboard actually, but um, I didn't. I must admit, I didn't see that. But I was pretty impressed with the the new scoreboard. Um, council putting their hand in the pocket there, so that was good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and and how good was it to to be back at the match and and how much you missed it and stuff? Yeah, I think I was saying to the people I sit with that you know it's clear that the team. Um, you could tell that the start of the game suffering from a bit of a lack of confidence and I think when that started to come back, uh, you know, things started to click in place a bit because I was obviously worried the last few weeks the performances have been well, if you describe them as dreadful, it would probably be a compliment um, but I thought you know, parts of the game we look really we look really good on, on uh, Sunday and I think part of that will be the stand of the opposition. I don't think Whitehaven are going to be the strongest team that we play but um, you know, we seemed to get a bit more rhythm, rhythm and confidence as the game went on, and then um, obviously not, nothing builds confidence like putting some tries on the board. So yeah, it was good to see, but I think there are obviously bigger tests that lie ahead um, for the for the squad. Um, how they back it up on Sunday will be interesting as well, because on paper that should be a, a game that we should win. But you know, let's see. But I think the impact of the fans being being in there, you could see on the team as well. I think some of the performances we've seen. In recent weeks, necessarily, we wouldn't necessarily have seen had there been supporters in there, baying for blood in some cases. I think so. Yeah, uh, definitely. Did you did you have to change uh, your match day routine at all, or you know, you yeah, just uh, to... I live in Manchester anyway, so I tend to leave quite early for the games. But um, I, I think we probably got there earlier than we would have, and obviously we didn't go uh, for a drink before the game. Um, we just had to get inside and make sure we were in the seat and stuff. So, yeah, it'd be nice when hopefully uh, these next two home games are out of the way and we can get back to a little bit of normality of turning up a little bit later than that. So thanks to Chris, to Kevin, Martin, Mike and Nicola for contributing to this podcast. Thanks to, to the other people who um, reached out to me. Hopefully we'll get you on in a future podcast. May well make a little fan segment 
uh, a regular feature of upcoming podcasts. Thanks, as always, to the sponsors, PD Law Solicitors, Arnold Gorse Financial Management, Parklands FC and Whistle Witness are away at Oldham this weekend. And then um, the following week, it's the Cup semi-final away at Featherston. Uh, we'll, we'll be back for an episode just after that game. So see you then.